Hello and welcome back to The Red Path. My name is Dara and in today's video we will be concluding our Getting Started with World Leaders mini-series by painting Lord Invocatus. This miniature is the centerpiece of the Combat Patrol box and it's probably best to leave him to the very end when you're painting it since he is a little bit more complicated and you want him to stand out on the battlefield. Invocatus has a fun mix of colours and will work through some easy techniques for making him look like a suitable leader for your warband. If you haven't already, you should watch our first two Getting Started videos, where I show you how to paint some jackals and a Corrin Berserker. Once you have those mastered, it's time to turn your attention to this brutal warlord. Remember, this series is aimed for beginners, so if you're just starting out with painting, this one's for you. However, if you want something a little more complicated, tune into our weekly streams on Twitch, and if you want to improve your own painting, you can sign up to our Patreon, which will give you access to our painting Focus Discord, where I show you how to improve your minis. If you've enjoyed this video and the series, be sure to drop a like and subscribe, and let me know down below what you'd like to see next. Anyway, let's grab a brew and dive into this mini. We've kept Invocatus off his base for painting. This will allow us to access the underside of the Juggernaut, which would otherwise be hard to reach. When approaching a mini like this, it's important to consider what piece you should start with. In this case, the best starting point is the Juggernaut, since we'll be doing some dry brushing techniques to make the black armor more interesting. Let's get into that now. It can be hard to make black armor look interesting, but this easy technique is a great way to bring life into those flat panels. We're lightly dry brushing a thin coat of Eshin Grey over the black armor for starters. Dry brushing is a technique where you take undiluted paint and wipe most of it off the brush, then lightly brush over the desired area of the miniature. We're going to add some lighter grey tones now, by dry brushing on a mix of Eshin Grey and Administratum Grey. This is an even lighter dry brush than the first one, and we're going to focus on the higher parts of the miniature. This will simulate directional lighting and also make the black armor look a lot more realistic. In reality, black armor is perceived as a mixture of grey tones, with only the darkest areas being truly black, since light will cast reflections on this armor. By doing these dry brush layers, we are simulating that effect. Finally, the lightest dry brush of all is with pure administratum grey. This is only on the highest parts of the black armor, and we are being very gentle with our brush strokes. This serves as a final but striking highlight which makes the effect pop out. It's a simple way to make your black armor really jump. To tie it all together now, we are going to unify the layers with a wash of Nuln Oil. Washes are heavily diluted acrylic paints and will naturally flow into the crevices and recesses of a mini. It's important to control the flow of the wash to make sure it doesn't pool in any areas that you don't want it. This wash will pull all of our dry brush layers together and really sell the effect. It's time to start Invocatus himself now. For the red armor, we're going to lay down a base coat of Wordbearer's Red and Mephiston Red in two thinned layers of paint. We've thinned this base coat with water and it will look streaky at first, but adding a second layer once it's dry will really reinforce the colour while retaining all the detail of the miniature. This muted red mixture is a good foundation for world leaders and will allow us to build up nice brighter effects after. Speaking of those brighter layers, let's add one of pure Mephiston Red now. Again, it's watered down to preserve detail, and we're going to avoid painting the deeper, shadowed areas of the armour, leaving our base coat hanging out there so we can simulate some tone and shadow.
Finally, we're going to add a mixed layer of Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet. This is quite a bright layer and will be a nice finishing touch for the red without being too bright. Once again, we're avoiding the deeper areas of the miniature and pulling the paint towards the light, trying to imagine where the source of illumination is hitting the miniature and how it would affect it. Now it's time to frame the armour in some brass. We're using a base coat of Runelord brass to kick things off. It's a nice silvery brass which provides a colder tone to offset the rich, warm reds of the armour. Painting trim can be tedious, but it's important to be patient with it and make sure you've got a solid colour laid down. This brass tone is one I use all the time and it goes down very easy on the miniature. To highlight that bronze, we're going to quickly pass over the trim with Canoptic Alloy. This is a really nice silver bronze colour and it helps draw the eye to the miniature thanks to its bright glow. We're working quickly here and it's not quite a dry brush but the faster sharper brush strokes help build up a nice metallic effect which looks natural and realistic. Moving to our iron components now, we're going to put down a base coat of gunmetal. This is a paint from Ammo Make, and I really like it for the metals, but if you want to stick with Citadel, I suggest using something like Iron Warriors. We want a nice dark metal first, which we can build up on. It helps make things look more realistic. We're going to move on to a dry brush layer. For this, I'm using polished metal, again from Ammo Mig, but you can sub in any medium iron colour from Citadel here. There's two important things to remember. First, working quick and fast means we put down jagged, sharp brush strokes, making the metal look worn and real. Second, we want to focus on the raised, higher parts to emulate where the light is hitting the metal components. Keeping all that in mind, we'll do a second dry brush now, this time using steel from Ammo Mig, which is a very bright silver colour. This layer is super light and we're just going to focus on hard edges and raised areas to make a strong highlight. There's not too much leather and straps on Invocatus and we don't want to distract the eye too much, so for this we're going to simply put down a layer of Tandia bark. We'll wash it later on to add some definition, but for now that's enough. Skulls and Bones though, deserve some love. Starting with our base coat of XV88, we'll put down a nice sandy layer on these areas which serves as a great base coat for the dry brush layers which are coming next. Dry brushing on Xandri Dust will help build up that bone tone, but we're leaving the XVA show through in the recesses on the mini to make sure there's some definition coming through. Finally, a light dry brush of a Shabdi bone provides a lovely little highlight to draw the eyes to those trophies. Moving on now to some washes, we're going to add definition and shadows to the armor. We'll do this with a light wash of Nuln Oil that covers the red armor and the metallic areas. As before, we're taking care to make sure that that wash is going down where we want it, and oftentimes the lighter the better for washes since we don't want to darken things up too much. Next, a wash of Agarak's Earthshade will help make the metals look aged and worn and provide a bit of depth to the letters too. We're going to be quite selective with where we apply this on the metals, to show that not everything is equally aged. Pay attention to areas where rust and grime would build up over time to make this look more natural. Okay, we're almost done, but we need to add some flesh tones. For this, I'm using a mix of Pink Horror and Rackarth Flesh. By adding a touch of pink into the mix, we'll make the paint look more realistic and emulate blood flow under the skin. Two thin coats will be needed here to put down a strong finish. 
Next, we're going to lightly wash the skin tone with Caraberg Crimson. This will help pick out muscle definition and guide us when we're applying our next and final layer for the skin. Lastly, we'll add a layer of pure rack art flesh. We're taking care here to only hit the raised areas, letting our first layer and that wash hang out elsewhere to add lots of definition and tone to these areas. As a finishing touch, we're going to dot the eyes in with Baharoth Blue. Steady your hand for this by bracing your elbows firmly on the table and making sure your brush is well pointed to avoid paint spilling over onto that red armor. Now that the paint job is done, we can put him back on his base and see how he's looking. Time to take some photos. And there he is, Invocatus is ready to run down the enemies of the world leaders in style. I hope you enjoyed this video and our other getting started videos too, but most importantly I hope it helped you with your own painting. I'd love to see your work and everything else that you've done, so be sure to drop into our discord and post some pics in our hobby channels. As always, if you have enjoyed this, there's loads of ways to support the channel including subscribing, Patreon, Twitch and lots more. The links are all down below in the description. If you'd like more of this type of content and more getting started painting videos, comment down below. It really helps us plan our content better for everyone. For now though, it is time to sign off. I've been Dara and you've been watching The Red Path. Until the next one everyone, stay healthy, stay safe and kill, maim, burn.